In the first part of this tutorial, we implemented the Arduino code to decode the DMX protocol. Now we're going to implement the hardware to test out our code. So before we get into building the hardware, let's first see how to set up a light sequencing project in Vixen. So the first thing we're going to do is go to Sequence, New Event Sequence, and Vixen Standard Sequence. At that, and that opens up a uh, project wizard. So just click Next. So we'll accept the default period here and just accept the default and for the channel count we just want four channels and that's going to be for each of our Arduino pins and then uh, we can you can change the names of the channels we're going to use just channel one through four and uh, for the plug-in setup then we're going to want to use DMX 512 and that will be for channels one through four hit next Assign the audio. This is where you choose uh, the song that you want. So uh, this, so MP3 is a supported format. So we're going to use uh, Billy Jean. Hit OK. Uh, next, and so the sequence time is the length of the MP3, and we'll just hit Create it. Uh, do test. DMX. So now that we have our DMX, then we can start uh, creating. Uh, light sequencing patterns. So one thing that's very useful is they have this uh, audio visualizer and it allows you to see the waveform. So you can see where the actual beats are. So you can see there's a beat here. So we're going to turn on channel 1 for this beat on and we're going to turn on channel 2 for uh, this beat which was, should be the down beat. Then we're going to copy these uh, copy and then we'll paste them right here See, uh, paste, opaque paste, and then we'll copy these. We'll paste them right here, and you just keep on doing this and building up your uh, sequence. So this will just be for our beat. So then you can see that uh, if we if we start playing, then. Uh, Uh, for each of the channels that are on, then uh, that'll output that data in DMX format. And so on the Arduino side, we're going to decode that and toggle lights. Okay, so now it's time to uh, test our DMX code on an actual Arduino. And I'm going to be using this uh, breadboard Arduino. It's something that I designed for uh, Tokyo Hackerspace to teach uh, Arduino and electronics classes in there. And uh, what we're going to do is we're well this breadboard this breadboard has uh, some built-in LEDs as well so we're going to use those to test out the uh, the DMX so this is our circuit all hooked up so we have pins 8, 9, 10 and 11 connected up to uh, the four LEDs on this uh, breadboard Arduino and this is our Vixen software we're going to start it up in just one second and here we go Now we're going to construct a circuit that's significantly more realistic. And so this is the schematic that uh, we're going to be using. We have uh, the Arduino with pins 8, 9, 10, and 11 connected to a transistor array. And that transistor array w is going to drive uh, four 1-watt LEDs. In case the transistor array confuses anyone, this is the equivalent circuit of what we're going to be implementing. The transistor array just packages everything into a nice, convenient IC. Okay, so that was a cute functional test of uh, our DMX code, but let's let's put together a circuit that's going to be uh, more closer to what we uh, what we would actually want. So in this test, we're actually going to use the Arduino pins to uh, to toggle a transistor, and the trend and that'll allow us to use a uh, much higher currents. And so for our loads, for our LEDs, we're going to use these one watt LEDs, which are going to be uh, significantly brighter than uh, those surface mount LEDs that you just saw. And so this gets us closer to like a, a real implementation where you actually want to put on some kind of a light show. Um, the transistors that we're going to be using is uh, we're going to be using this IC. This IC is a uh, transistor array, and it's like a standard transistor array. So every a lot of different companies make them, and you can just use discrete transistors also. So you can use FETs or bipolar junction transistors. 
Um, we're not going to get into transistors. I guess that would be uh, an electronics tutorial. So we can talk about that uh, at a different time. But anyways, uh, let's get started on the circuit. So the first thing we want to do on the breadboard is we want to hook up power and ground. So that's going to be crucial. So we are going to do that right now. Power. There you go. So that's power and ground. And the next thing is we're going to break out the pins uh, that we'll be using onto the breadboard. So that'd be a pins 8, 9, 10, and 11 on the Arduino. 9, 10, and 11. Okay, so after that, then we are going to put this pin in such, or put the IC in such that uh, pins 1 through 4 go to the rows uh, that we just broke out on the Arduino. So that means that pins 1, the, so Arduino pins 8, 9, 10, 11 go to pins 1, 2, 3, and 4 on this chip. And now we need to just connect up the ground on pin 9 of this IC and we are good to go for the transistor. So now we need to do the LED part of the switch uh, or LED, the LED part of the circuit and we'll be using uh, uh, current limiting resistors in order to limit the amount of current that goes into the LEDs. So if you ran these LEDs with a transistor switch and no limiting resistor then we're just going to fry them and it's sad to waste LEDs like that. So we're going to hook these resistors up to the output of the transistor array. Or I guess the collector of the transistor array. There we go. Okay, so these, these current limiting resistors will limit the current to a couple of hundred milliamps. So let's see, that should be just enough to drive these uh, LEDs. So next up, we're going to plug these LEDs in, and so these LEDs actually have posts soldered onto them, and so these posts make it easier to breadboard or to prototype. So these, this is a single color LED, and then this is uh, actually an RGB LED. Let's see, so on this RGB LED, we're just going to use the red. I'm going to have another color here for some contrast. Let's see. Yeah, that'll work. Put this one in YAR. And hold this guy kind of just kicking back. Kicking back here. Okay, so that should give us that should give us a nice uh, some nice colors to play with. So uh, next we have to connect these LEDs to the uh, current limiting resistors, so let's do that. So I'm using these uh, machine pin jumper wires, and these things are just, if you don't care about looks, then these things are awesome, because you just stick them in wherever you want. So, this is, this is a quick and dirty way to hack a prototype. Okay, so we have, uh, we have the bottom side connected to those LEDs. So now we just got to power those LEDs, and we're just going to use these ones. These are machine pinned wires, but they have uh, one side is a female and one side is a male end. So these ones are pretty cool too. Bam. There we go. These in. And you go. Okay, it's not beautiful, but there we go. This is going to be, this is going to be our, uh, this will be our functional prototype, and we're going to test it right now. Okay, so this is our prototype. Um, now, starting up the software, and here we go.
Okay, so it looks good. And uh, from here, you'd be able to move on to the next step, which would be to like uh, put together an actual uh, lighting installation. So that concludes the second part of decoding DMX with an Arduino, the hardware implementation. In the third part, we're going to be making some minor tweaks to add a significant feature. We're going to be sending the decoded DMX data over a wireless link to control a lighting display wirelessly.